Hey everyone. Hey bag makers, I'm Sarah Lawson from So Sweetness. This is my husband Danny, and you're watching Social Sunday, my weekly sewing chat. Hey everybody, happy Sunday. Welcome to Social Sunday. I see Carol's watching from Colorado. I saw everyone chatting beforehand, well before we, we were scheduled to get started on Facebook or YouTube, so thanks so much for doing that. If you can make time in your day, Joanne's watching. I can't believe I get to watch live. Marsha's from West Palm Beach, uh, Florida. Michelle from Broadview, Illinois, and Lynn from Wisconsin. So thanks everyone for tuning in. We have a few things to chat with you about today and then I'm going to be answering some questions live. So if you have a question for me and you already know what your question is, can be about a sewing notion or tool, a bag making related question, or just a general sewing question, you can type your question anytime in the comments. Danny will be checking his laptop throughout the show and collecting comments and uh, I'll answer as many as I can live. So the first thing that I wanted to announce is um, the winner of the week two sew along for the Clyde Bank tote and um, that is a sew along being hosted in the Facebook group, the Sew Sweetness Facebook group um, being hosted by Michelle Graham and um, the randomly drawn winner for week two is Brenda Thompson. Co so congratulations to you Brenda. Um, we have a couple weeks left for the sew along and you can jump in at any time. The Clyde Bank tote is great especially now because it doesn't require any hardware you just need uh, zippers to make this particular bag and it's a free pattern and video so why not. Um, I do have two brand new acrylic templates that are coming scheduled to come this Tuesday. Let's see if uh, that works out with uh, the scheduled uh, shipping date. Um, they're general bag making uh, acrylic templates that you can use for just about any bag that you're making. One of them is for um, purse feet placement, so a small acrylic template for that. And then the second one, which uh, I'm very excited about, is for marking rivets or Chicago screws for placing onto your um, handles or straps. And I have one of our um, early prototypes that I was working on with Ed. Uh, the finalized ruler is going to look uh, a teeny tiny bit different, but it's got uh, measurements and holes for spacing of half inch, uh, three quarters of an inch, and one inch, and the finalized ruler will have some lines to help you place on your strap because I know certainly from past experience that I've had a lot of uh, rivets or Chicago screws that I've made markings for and when I looked at the, the finalized, the finished bag, uh, maybe one or two rivets looked like slightly off and I knew that it was an, a, a marking error on my part and so I think this acrylic template will help with that. So I do have listings on the website in the what's new section of the shop for both of these items. They don't have photos yet just because I don't have the, the finalized templates. Um, they're out of stock just because we don't have them yet, but I'll be listing them in stock uh, as soon as they arrive and I'll be demonstrating how to use both of them. They're very easy, but I'll be demonstrating how to use both of them on next Sunday's show for Social Sunday. So stay tuned for that. Um, what else? I really didn't make much in the past week. Uh, I'm just continuing working on my summer sampler 2020 that I purchased uh, at the beginning of summer. And so uh, this is my latest block that I finished. Um, uh, it came in two different versions, either foundation paper pieced or just traditionally pieced. So I've got four blocks finished so far and I'm really excited to finish the quilt. Um, I, they come out every Sunday night slash Monday morning, so I'll be working on another block either tonight or tomorrow morning, and then I'll show you um, next Sunday what I finished as far as that block goes. Um, I have been listening to, uh, I only listen to one or two podcasts generally, but I picked up a couple new ones uh, just because I found that for some reason when I've been going to bed lately, I do enjoy reading when I go to bed, but my eyes get so heavy and after like five minutes of reading, I'm ready, I, I just can't read anymore. Um, my eyes are very heavy. So I started listening to podcasts at bedtime, um, two different ones. Um, one is a few years old, but it's called Revisionist History and it's hosted by Malcolm Gladwell. I'm a really big fan of his books and so I'm not sure I, why I waited so long to listen to his podcast, but again, that's uh, called Revisionist History and the second one is uh, has been very helpful to me lately and it's called the happiness lab it's hosted by 
Dr. Lori Santos, and she's a psych psychologist at Yale, and she talks about different things uh, related to happiness, and especially um, she did a small series um, related to uh, coping with coronavirus, which uh, I also found very helpful. And again, that one's called The Happiness Lab. Um, if you are a fan of podcasts or you listen to podcasts once in a while, I'm curious what what podcasts are your favorite. Um, now that I'm getting more and more into to listening to them, um, I'm maybe looking to pick up another new one or two. So let me know in the comments um, if you have a favorite podcast. Um, in other sewing, unsewing related news, um, I got my first organic crop share box um, yesterday evening, uh, right before I went to bed. Um, if you're not familiar with what a crop share is, uh, it is a, um, you, you pay a portion for the season uh, and you get a box from a local farm, um, in my case, a local Illinois farm, um, every week or every other week, depending on what the plan is. And so my box, I wrote down what I got in my box. I was very excited. The vegetables looked beautiful. Um, two pieces of squash. I got two heads of lettuce. Uh, the lettuce looked gorgeous. Um, kale. Uh, green onions, uh, two heads of broccoli. I got an extra broccoli for William. I've heard someone get so excited about a head of lettuce. I don't, I don't know. Um, garlic scapes, which I had not heard of. Snapes, I think, scapes. Garlic scapes, I don't know. I hadn't heard of those before. I'll have to Google how to use them. Uh, turnips and cilantro. And I looked up a couple of recipes um, beforehand because I wanted to make sure I used up the vegetables really quick. I'm making a soup with the kale. And I'll be making, I found a really great recipe online for um, um, yellow squash patties. I think they might be similar to, obviously I haven't made them yet, so I don't know, but from the recipe, it sounds similar to potato pancakes, but there's cheese and um, panko breadcrumbs. So I'm really excited to make um, those squash patties and I'll let you know how they turn out. And I'll share the recipe link uh, next Sunday when I give you my feedback about the recipe. All right, Danny's favorite second favorite part of the Sunday show when he's on the show with me. We'd like to invite all the bag makers uh, to stand proud. Let us know in the comments that you're part of the So Sweetness squad. We really appreciate that uh, you're here watching our show, even if you watch the broadcast later on in your week. Um, and I get emails sometimes from people who, um, if they have free time, go back and watch uh, you know, shows from the beginning, even shows from three years ago. So. Um, thank you so much for um, joining us on this bag making journey. Um, now let's get over, let you do some talking. Let's get over to your uh, pick of the week. It's probably the longest I've been quiet in a long time. Yeah, I'm you gonna are. continue it. No. <laughs> uh, my pick is actually, let's see if my memory works well, Charity White. Mm -hmm. She made a bag for her friend. She's not seen since March. She had a birthday. Um, and when she got to see her again, she gave her the bag and here's the picture. Um, awesome. Look at the uh, smile on her face. I think it she said the bag happy. was, uh, she gave it to her at church when yeah. she was able to return to church. So yeah. uh, it's a Polaris bag. Yes. And I like the um, inspirational sayings I can see from the fabric uh, on the Polaris bag. And Charity also made something for her, I believe her postman wanted a couple Cumberland backpacks, if memory serves correct. Mm -hmm. um, One had Minnie Mouse on it, I, I recall. Very good. Yep. Yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. I was very, I love it. I mean, great job, great. Charity. Yep. Uh, what else do we have on the schedule? Oh, uh, we're almost getting to the questions. Before we get over to the questions, I wanted to announce the winner of last week's giveaway. And that winner was Verna Hernan. So congratulations to you, Verna. Uh, when you get a chance or after the show, uh, please drop me an email with your mailing address so uh, we can send off your prize. And my email is sarah at sosweetness.com and that's Sarah with no H. Uh, I have another giveaway at the end of the show. We'll be giving away some corks, so stay tuned for that. And then um, I'm sure Danny's got a big list of questions ready to go for me. So um, take it away with the questions, Danny. All right. Um, Trisha wanted to know, good job on that logo. Um, Hi, Sarah and Danny. Question, have you used Wonderfuse and how did it compare with Palin Shape Plex if you have used it? I have used uh, Wonderfuse before. Um, I found it, as far as the application goes, I found it was pretty comparable to the Shape Flex. Um, I, after I fused it to the fabric, I felt like it, it felt pretty much the same. It fused about the same as far as fusing time. And, uh, the one major difference, however, is that 
Pellon Shape Flex is 20 inches wide on the bolt and the Wonder Fuse is um, 45 inches wide. So you get that extra width, uh, which can be helpful, especially if you're working with uh, bigger pattern pieces or sometimes it's just more economical to, to work with a wider width so that uh, you're able to uh, kind of Tetris more pattern pieces in there. So um, if you're able to get some, uh, the website where I found it from before was gotinterfacing.com. And uh, again, I found it comparable to the, the Pellon Shape Flex as far as the usage and the, the finished fusing. Um, Chris says, I'm sitting at the horse races watching you. Have to watch every Sunday no matter where I am. Oh, it's been a while since we went to the racetrack. Uh, we live in Chicago and our local racetrack is Arlington Racetrack. Um, I was actually just thinking about that the other day because my parents brought over, uh, it was a while ago, but uh, I'm still deciding where to hang this picture. It's a picture of a, a horse race that I went to as a kid and it was a big deal at the time. The horse that was running, uh, Arlington created this special invitational race uh, with a big purse just so to draw this horse uh, to the Chicago area. His name was Cigar and I remember uh, we went there to watch Cigar Race. There were so many people there. I got a Cigar t-shirt. I don't think I have that. I don't think my mom saved it or I don't recall what happened to it, but I got this huge framed signed portrait of the horse running in this race signed by the jockey. And uh, like I said, uh, I had this picture since I was a kid and in our new house uh, trying to decide where to hang it. So long story short, I hope you're having a great time today at the racetrack and uh, I'm not sure if you're betting or not. We usually do, you know, little $2 bets here and there with the kids, uh, but I hope you're having a great time. Uh, Susan says, Sarah, can you hold a Clyde Bank tote up so we can see the relative size? Uh, they're in the basement. Can I run down there and grab them really quick or? Sure. Okay. Can you handle talking for a minute while I go yeah, grab them? Yeah, let me see some nice comments. Um, okay. I'll be right back. Someone okay. asked, I, I saw it earlier, I didn't post it, but someone asked if I was wearing contacts. I am not wearing contacts. Sometimes I'll wake up and I'll forget my glasses next to the bed usually, and I'll just go all through the day without glasses. My vision's not so bad where I need them for everyday use, mostly for driving, um, so I can go without them. But luckily with our new set, our screen is pretty close to us, so if there's comments, I can see them relatively easy. On our previous one that was further away, so I had to wear my glasses. So maybe I'll stop wearing them for the show. You tell me, is it better with glasses or without glasses? I know you get the shine when I wear glasses, so... Hopefully, you guys say with glasses because I do prefer my glasses, but we'll see in the comments. I um, hope everyone's getting ready for a great 4th of July coming up next week. I'm super excited. That was pretty quick, sir. Sorry, I tried to run without falling over anything and hurting myself. Um, I'll have you hold uh, the size large if that's okay. Sure. All right, this is the Clyde Bing Tote, size large, don't put it over your head. And this is size, this is size small, so I think I sort of feel like to the bottom you can see like the height wise. I feel like size large is a really good uh, like beach bag size. So they can get the scaling. Okay. Would it help if I stood up and maybe held this? No, I put them there? side by side so they're okay. exact depth. I feel away. like if a person held it. Sure. So here's yeah, here's the size small, uh, me holding it. All right. Hopefully that's helpful. Uh oh, you didn't put the other one on. I don't. Know. It's okay. <laughs> it's gonna be off the screen anyway because it's a, a a rather large bag. All right. All right. Oh, a huge list of questions. That's great. Um, it's about the template. Cheryl says, can we pre-order? Oh, oh logo, take the logo darn. away. Um, unfortunately, the website is not set up for pre-orders. However, um, we do have an out-of-stock notification set up on the website for any items that are currently listed as out-of-stock, such as those two new templates, since we don't have them yet. Um, however, if you do check them out on the website, you can enter your email address to be automatically notified as soon as I list those in stock. Hopefully Tuesday, like I said, if, as long as they arrive on time and um, I will get pictures up on the website um, as soon as I have the actual finalized templates. <clears throat> Next one's on the board. Oh, sorry. Uh, Deborah <laughs> says, Sarah, your top is such a beaut beautiful print and you look so nice. Thank you so much, Deborah. Um, this is a top I made a few years ago. I think the name of the sewing pattern was the Fox Glove Tank. It's not exactly a racer back in the back, but the, well, it kind of is. It kind of is. Um, the fabric is a, a rayon fabric designed by Joel Dewberry, uh, again, from a few years back. And I really like it because of the, the purple prints, the big florals, and 
uh, it was just something, uh, a different print than I um, had in my closet already. Uh, will you ever stock zippers by the yard with matching coils? Um, I think by matching coils, you probably mean the coils the same color as the zipper tape. Um, at this time, probably not just because we already carry the um, by any handbag zippers with the double pulls, which are, is already um, the teeth match the tape. I understand it's different than zipper by the yard, but uh, for now, um, we just have the two uh, separate things and the zippers by the yard that we carry have the um, metal look nylon teeth currently. Um, Sybil says a handle made of some vinyl as ready-made uh, uh, bag has come loose, lost the screws. So my question is, there any prep for the bottom of the handle that fits into a metal opening and could sh Chicago screws replace the ones lost? The screws go through the metal part into the handle. Um, a ready-made bag. You might want to check out Emmeline Bags. She does have some, um, I don't, off the top of my head, I don't recall the term for them, but like different um, hardware for the ends of handles that kind of like, um, capping off the handles, that kind of thing, different styles. Um, her, again, her website's mlinebags.com, and I think um, if I'm right, uh, what you were looking for for your ready, your store-bought bag, I think you'll be able to make something like that work. So check out her webs website for that. Um, Carol says, do you make tassels from vinyl? Mine do not hang straight after a while. They flare out. Do you have any suggestions? I do have... I don't make a ton of tassels, but I do have, can you grab the blue bag from behind you with the cat on it? Blue bag, cat, yeah, there you go. You say satellite bag. Uh, I guess I could have. I don't, I don't that's necessarily blue. I don't know, this particular bag has a tassel. I see what you mean about it flaring out a little bit. If anyone has a good answer to Carol's question about tassels to keep them um, nice and neat and um, contained, let us know in the comments. Danny's going to be checking through uh, to see if anyone has an answer, and we'll put it up on the screen for Carol. Julie says, do you still use the Soline Pencil Trio? I was watching a video from 2018. Actually, I was just using it yesterday. So if you're not familiar with the Soline Pencil Trio, it's a um, pencil with three different colors of lead. So white lead, light pink lead, and black lead. Um, you just uh, kind of push the, the cap of the pen to dictate what color you, you'd like to come out. And it is refillable. Uh, we sell the um, actual Soline pencil on our website as well as the refills. And I, I like to use it for marking on, I was cutting out some cork in a different color, in the navy color, and the, ba the backing is really black. And so I didn't want to use my friction pens, which I normally would use. So I used the Soline Pencil Trio and it got a nice crisp um, line. I, I chose white so that I could see the markings that I was making on the wrong side of the cork and uh, it did it did a really great job with that. So yes, I still do use it. Um, Barb says, Sybil, you'll do better riveting it. Um, rivets for the, the store-bought bag. Judy says, Danny, I see your shirt. Do you watch Naruto? Yep. Yes, that's the first show. Anime, <laughs> my son and myself, we watch together. Um, Hope says, I wonder if you soak them in hot water if they would lay flat afterwards. Uh, oh, that's a good suggestion. Margo says, uh, do you have a tutorial for the zippers by the yard? Yes, I do have a free video on my YouTube channel or my website, how to get the zipper pulls on the zippers by the yard. Um, I think if you do a search on my YouTube channel for um, how to attach zippers by the yard, um, I just use a fork. Um, most people have uh, an extra fork they can use. Um, you might need to bend the prongs a, a little bit apart if they're too close together or if you have a fork with four prongs perhaps. Um, but it's really easy to do and I'll show you how to do it and um, do it on your own so that you can just have both of your hands because um, you need to um, have the, the fork held down with something a little bit weighted so that you can do it on your own without the, the help of another person. Um, Ryan says, after making so many bags and using so much fusible interfacing, I find my ironing board and iron get nasty. How do you keep yours clean? So a pressing cloth will help with that. I know what you mean, though, because years ago I had uh, a really nasty, dirty iron and I had to replace the ironing board cover. For some reason, I haven't had any trouble with it lately, and my iron's actually uh, pretty crystal clear, but... Um, you can either buy replacement ironing board covers, make your own so that you always have a backup so that you can swap them out. But the pressing cloth will definitely help with that. 
<clears throat> um, Diana says, do you own a rivet press? If so, where's a good place to purchase one from? I purchased mine on Etsy. Um, the seller's name is Minkus Margo. Um, there are other um, sellers of rivet presses. Another one is Gold Star Tools. I haven't purchased anything from them, so I can't speak on um, their customer service or the quality of their presses, but um, I know a lot of members of the So Sweetness uh, Facebook group have, have purchased uh, the Gold Star Press uh, rivet press before and seems like they like it just fine. <clears throat> Uh, Marianne says, wrap the tassel with a bit of fabric to keep it straight. That's a good suggestion, too, in addition to trying the hot water. <clears throat> um, Sharon says, any alternative to fusible fleece? So um, Pollen makes fusible fleece, and they also make um, another product made out of fleece that's also fusible called Thermolam. The Thermolam is a little bit, uh, a tiny bit thicker. It's uh, a needled fleece, so if you're familiar with warm and natural um, batting, it's similar to that, but obviously fusible. Um, if you have some fleece or batting on hand and you want to make it into a fu fusible product, um, you can use uh, Pellon Wonder Under, which is available in yardage and also in little strips. Um, the yardage would be most helpful here. Um, it's a, a fusible web, so that means there's a fusible on one side, which you would iron to the um, fleece or batting first let it cool completely and then the other side is covered with paper which you would peel back and it reveals the second side of the adhesive and then you could fuse that to the wrong side of your fabric. So that's the wonder under is just if um, you have batting or something else that's not already fusible that you would like to make it into a fusible. Um, Laura says if you soak the vinyl strips in some warm starchy water and lay it out flat to dry it will keep it from fraying longer but in time um, unfortunately it will fray again. Oh yeah. <clears throat> Um, Natasha says, what is the secret to sewing around bottom on a handbag? That's a really great question. So me personally, when I'm sewing um, the around bottom onto my bag, when I'm attaching the bottom panel to um, the body of the bag, first off, I use tons of wonder clips um, around the entire outer edge. Um, I often like to, after it's pinned, I often like to, before I get it over to the sewing machine, take my scissors or you can use pinking shears and snip little V's about every half inch wherever there's a curve. So that way when I get it over to the sewing machine, because generally the, the bottom of the bag, if it has a curve, that has a curve already. But if you're sewing it to the body of the bag, generally that's just a straight edge. And so what those little clips do, the notch, they're technically called notches, or like I said, you could use pinking shears. The notches help the straight edge of the fabric ease through the curve. Um, also, sometimes it helps sewing with a certain edge against the bed of your sewing machine and a certain edge face up. Um, you can check it out depending on what your uh, bag looks like, but oftentimes I have good success with um, either the bottom panel uh, face up or if it's uh, adding something to the side panel, side panel against the bed of my sewing machine. Basically, you want um, whichever method gets you uh, away from having the fabric puckered um, face up. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, I'm, visual I'm visualizing in my head. Kelly says stapling in the seam allowance on round bags is helpful. Thanks for reminding me about that, Kelly. I do have a video on my YouTube channel, um, how to use staples to finish a bag. And yes, as Kelly mentioned, um, the staples would be helpful also because sometimes when you're sewing through the curve, even if you've used Wonder Clips, uh, the layers kind of uh, tend to separate as they're approaching your sewing machine, of course, uh, typical, uh, right before you get it under the sewing machine, uh, the two layers of fabric kind of uh, drift apart. Um, staples would definitely help with that because uh, with staples, there, there won't be any shifting like there might be with the Wonder Clips. Um, Laura says, will there be a Minikin season three? Um, who knows what the future holds, but I'm guessing probably not, or at least not to that extent. Uh, Minikin season two was 13 patterns and videos the original season was 12 and it was uh, quite a marathon. It was like it was like for me writing a book, but times two because we had the videos to go along with it. So um, I don't know. We've done bundles of four patterns and videos in the past. Uh, at least for this summer, we're, we're tr going to try to release just uh, single patterns and videos uh, just because, what, because of what's going on and we just want to be mindful of... Uh, people's budgets, and I know a lot of people lost jobs as well 
recently. So um, that's our goal uh, as far as that goes. It was already on the screen, Sarah. <laughs> Uh, Geraldine says, what is the difference between TP971 and TP971F? So the, the F is your giveaway for the fusible product. So the 971 will just uh, be the sew-in and the 971F will be the fusible product. So Moni says, do you have a bag that can be used for a bowling bag? Um, I'm not sure if you mean, does she, do you think she means for an actual bowling ball to go yes, inside? That's what a bowling bag would be. Uh, well, there's bowling style bags, so I wasn't sure if she meant for that. Um, I don't know. The Renegade bag is, I feel like, technically a bowling style bag. That turtle one's sort of bowling style, but small. But I don't think a bowling ball would fit inside. Um, I'd have to check on the measurements, but maybe the large size of the tortoise bag. Um, Moni, email me after the show, and we can talk through some options. I'm thinking maybe... Yeah, maybe the tortoise bag might work for that, uh, but we'll see. Yeah, email me, um, Sarah at SoSweetness.com, Sarah with no H. Um, Elaine says, I wish I could just purchase everything I need for bag making from you. Uh, I know we're lacking. We for sure don't sell interfacing currently. Uh, I think we have just about everything else that you'd need. Um, hardware, I know a couple things we're out of stock on. Uh, we have zippers, zipper pulls, uh, notions. We're pretty well stocked on notions. However, if there's a particular notion we don't already sell, or you've used a cool notion lately, feel free to email me because I'm always on the hunt for new notions. Um, in fact, next Sunday I'll be demonstrating a notion that someone emailed me about recently. And uh, I'm really excited. It, it's funny because someone asked me a question about uh, how to repair rips or holes in a quilt on Social Sunday uh, a few weeks ago. I got a follow-up email from another person suggesting a particular product to help with that. Uh, so I purchase said product and I'll be uh, demonstrating and reviewing it um, on the show next Sunday. Uh, Sue says, maybe lay the tassels flat in a book with weights on the book. That's a good one too. Great suggestion. Thank you. Pamela says, what other types of marking pens and pencils do you use? I have trouble getting marks to show up. So uh, my, th my top three, uh, friction pens, they come in lots of different colors. Um, they erase with the heat of an iron, but sometimes they tend to come back, um, such as in cold weather. So for friction pens, I usually just like to mark on either the wrong side of the fabric or on an area of the fabric that won't be seen in the finished bag. Clover Choco, which is uh, actually, I'm going to pop up uh, since you're here on the show with me and grab those three products. Okay, um, so here's the friction pens that I was talking about a second ago. Uh, they are, one side has like a little rubber tip, a white tip, and this is what, um, I, I write a lot of stuff on paper with friction pens too, and if you're using it for paper, this tip will uh, remove your marks. Uh, otherwise, if you're using it on fabric, the iron will do that. Um, second one, which we already talked about, the Soline Pencil Trio, this is what it looks like, and uh, you just kind of twist the cap to get the different colors. And uh, Clover Choco, which this is filled with uh, basically chalk dust. And it has a little wheel over here and it distributes uh, as you're dragging it across the fabric, it creates a line. I only recommend getting Clover Choco in white, which is the color we saw on our website. I've tried all the other colors before. I do not like any of the other colors as far as being able to re be removed from the fabric. Um, so those are my big three as far as the marking tools that I use. Kathy says, what stitch length do you use with vinyl and what uh, what size needle? So I pretty much use uh, Microtex 94T needles for just about everything that I sew, even for quilt blocks. Um, two brands that you can check out are either Schmetz or Organ Needles. I've used both in the past. I have both in my stash. I think the one I have on my sewing machine right now is the Schmetz brand. Um, stitch length, um, if, if I'm just sewing things together, like if I'm sewing things right sides together, I generally use, uh, on my particular sewing machine, it might differ uh, from sewing machine to sewing machine, I use uh, two and a half millimeter stitch length. If I'm top stitching, I generally use three millimeter stitch length, uh, maybe slightly longer, but I'm generally sticking to three millimeters. And again, that might uh, depend on your sewing machine. Um, also for the vinyl, I wanted to note, 
you should use either um, a Teflon foot, which is a foot that's coated with, uh, kind of has a white plasticky um, um, sewing machine foot uh, that will help it glide across the vinyl without getting stuck or dragging, or a walking foot. So either of those uh, with the vinyl. Margaret says you should try My Hero Academia. Sounds familiar to it's me. It's for me. Uh, <laughs> yes, I have watched all of My Hero Academia with William as well. Uh, William and I love watching anime, so anytime we see something fun come up, he'll generally catch it first, or I may see it on Netflix and we'll watch it together, but we do watch a lot of anime together. Didn't you start watching something different recently? Or Yeah, it's... Um, gosh, I don't even know the name of it. Uh, it was written in Japanese, um, but it was on Netflix. It was a newer, popular show. It was about like swords that come to life as evil spirits or something. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, Soledad says, I saw your tutorials for the first time and they're really uh, re and really find them helpful. Thank you. I'm so glad you enjoyed the videos. We really love making them. Uh, we've done a lot of uh, about 10 minute or less tutorials over the years on Social Sunday. And uh, it's so funny. There's still things uh, out there to demonstrate. So I'm thankful that there's uh, lots of different ways to make things as far as bag making, sewing, and um, yeah. Lots more tutorials out there for us. Noria says, do you have any tutorials using a serger or will you? So that's a great question. I don't uh, use a serger for bag making. I do have a serger that I use for garment making. Um, I don't know, I, I can't say I won't ever do a tutorial in the future. Um, my serger currently is a, a Juki, the model number is MO1000, yeah. I'm a 1000. Uh, my first serger was uh, from Brother, and it was the Brother 1034D. Um, fantastic serger as well. Um, I love this name. Nitnack. Oh, are you? That was just an oh, idea. Okay. Um, Kathy uh, says, mm -hmm. do you think you will ever sell interfacing? Um, I don't know. We might, uh, especially foam interfacing. Um, I don't know, it's one of those things over the years that I've wanted to add, but interfacing takes up a lot of space. So um, for now, I'll have to say no, but you never know if we can free up a little bit more space uh, to sell interfacing. Wendy says, uh, did you give a hint of new patterns coming out? Um, I haven't. Um, I'm working on some things, but um, I keep getting not distracted. I keep having to stop because uh, either I run out of fabric because I messed up or um, I need a particular color zipper, which I don't have, so I have to order it. So I have several patterns like uh, in the middle of the, I've written the patterns, uh, different stages of sewing and taking step photos. So um, I don't know, I'll let you know and give you sneak peeks on the show as soon as I have something uh, substantial to show you, but for now I don't. Um, Shannon says, I have wondered about the bowling bag too. If tortoise bag works, it would be great if you designed a foam to hold the ball in place. That would be really interesting. It would be pretty cool if you took the tortoise bag you made <laughs> to the right proportion size. Um, you would take the bowling ball and put like a, like a, a, a bag of some sort to seal it. Mm -hmm. Put it in the bag like on a small holder. Then take great stuff, which is like foam insulation. You spray uh -huh. it in there. Get the non-expanding version. So you could spray it in there and have it fill the whole bag. Ooh. Then once it dries, you take it apart. And you cut it in half so you can obviously put the ball in there. I didn't know anything about that. Would I've it, seen it for other uses. Like would something packing. like that be messy or no? Does it? Just... I mean, the first time of doing it, yeah. Yeah, that's why you have to like seal the inside of it. Well, I, I you understand You got to make a that. shell and it'd be interesting. I don't know if oh, that would okay. be possible. I love thinking of stuff like that. I don't know if it's going <laughs> to be actually useful or not, but uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, Bumbley says, uh, Sarah, do you make kits? Uh, we used to sell supply kits. We stopped selling them. I think it was maybe at the beginning of this year or end of last year. We had a couple supply kits, which, so all of the supply kits had everything you needed to make the bag except for the fabric. So interfacing, zippers, if the bag needed hardware. We had a couple supply kits that sell, sold really well always, and the rest of them nobody really bought. So that's why we decided to, to discontinue them. Um, they took up a lot of space. Uh, they took a lot of man hours just assembling them. And so that was part of the reason why we decided to discontinue them in favor of carrying other things like um, expanding zipper by the yard. So that's the reasoning behind that. Um, Nilsa says, do you carry 30 weight rayon thread? 
Um, the only thread we carry is 40 weight because that's generally what I use for bag making. Although I have used 30 weight for bag making before, Superior Threads actually makes a really good 30 weight thread. Um, I purchased a pack from Superior Threads in the 30 weights uh, from Vanessa, Vanessa of Crafty Gemini. She had a, her own uh, packaging of threads from Superior anyway. Um, the only threads we carry on our website is Orifil 40 weights. Uh, we carry large spools of white and black, um, which we'll actually be getting uh, a restock of those tomorrow. And uh, we carry smaller spools in three packs of different uh, color variations. Ashley says, will Scotchgard ruin vinyl? So that's a great question. I always suggest, and I think it even says on the packaging for Scotchgard to test it on... Um, if possible, if you have some scraps left over from your project, either vinyl, quilting cotton, whatever fabric you're planning on using uh, to test on a, a scrap before you spray it on the finished bag just to make sure it won't discolor it, make it look any different. Um, I have not found that to be the case in the past, but um, it is a good idea to test it first because you don't want all those hours of work on the bag to go to waste. Um, I'm new to sewing on a pattern. What does it mean when they tell you to use uh, 45 or 60. Um, that sounds like it's probably the width of the fabric, 45 inches or... Later on, she mentioned inches. Oh, okay. 45 inches or 60 inches is generally the two common widths. Most quilting cotton usually only comes in 45 inches. Um, other substrates such as canvas or fabrics meant for garments often come in 60 inches. So um, especially if you're working on a garment pattern, it's important to know um, what... Uh, with the fabric the designer is specifying that you use when they give you the fabric requirements. Terry says, so why a Microtex needle? I have heard of them. Is it for strength? Yeah, it pierces uh, the shape of the needle. It pierces through all the layers better. Um, I actually explained this on a video that we shot um, called different uh, needles for bag making. So if you go on my YouTube channel or on my website um, in the tutorial section, the title of that video will be needles for bag making and I'll talk about um, sometimes it depends on the type of fabric you're using what type of needle you'll need um, but I talk about the microtex needles and um, all of that in that particular video um, Deborah says are you going to carry Tula Pink's uh, line work so Tula Pink in I think it's October has a really great black and white fabric line coming out um, called Lineworks. Um, it is black and white, but there's like tiny hints of color in each of the fabrics. I love that actually. Uh, I love it too. Um, we're, as of now, we're not going to be carrying it just because we've, uh, I don't know. Ran out of space? <laughs> Ran out of space. It's, to be honest, it's a tough call to decide, uh, to pick and choose what things we'll be able to sell on the website because we have limited spacing. Uh, we recently brought in Zippers by the Yard and Zipper Pulls. And Danny loves the zipper pulls. He said they usually sell like uh, like hotcakes. Um, so he's a big fan of the zipper pulls. So unfortunately, I like them because they're small. They are, yeah. Easy to um, that's true. Organize. Yeah, they don't take up a lot of space. So unfortunately, for now, no on the tulip pink line works. Although I did purchase a lot for myself for my personal stash. <laughs> um, will you consider doing a core club subscription? So we did it a few years ago. Every year I've said like, we'll bring it back next year, we'll bring it back next year. And as the years go by, it's still not come back. So the issue with Core Club for us is our initial issue was uh, space. Um, our second issue was man hours. We do have a full-time employee, but uh, right now his days are full with just packing orders. So throwing Core Club back in there will, would Serious derail, seriously derail things for us uh, as far as the man hours go. And um, I don't know, especially with COVID going on right now, it's really tough figuring out. I don't know. We're just not able to do all the things that we want to do. So me personally, I, I would personally love to do Core Club again. Um, realistically, it just won't work with uh, our current situation. And so for now, I have to say... Uh, no for the the immediate future for core club although all the free videos that we did for core club uh the six free court projects uh you can still find those on the youtube channel or on my website um elizabeth says have you chosen a new book for book club yet um i think i have a couple that i'd like to do um 
too. I have to let you know on a show soon. Sorry, I, I sort of uh, lost track of book club. We did the one great book uh, recently, and I'd like to do at least two more this summer. So we'll see. I'll let you know on a future show. Um, any tips on making recessed zippers? So I have a few free patterns that have recessed zippers. Um, I'm blinking on them right now. Uh, the Clyde Bank Tote, which is the the, sew, the current sew along pattern, that one has a recessed zipper. Uh, gosh, I'm drawing a blank on the rest of them. Um, I believe I have two free videos on my YouTube channel. One is how to add a recessed zipper to a bag that has a side panel. Um, and the second video is how to add a recessed zipper to a bag without a side panel, because not every bag has a side panel. Some bags are just front and back. Um, and those are general videos. Sometimes I try to create general tutorial videos so that you can apply them to just about any bag. So there's those two options. And again, you can find, the, find those on my YouTube channel. There's a little search box near the top and you can just type either of those titles in. Um, will you offer any other colors of thread? Um, so far, just the black and white have been popular. And we, like I said, we have the, the small spools in the three packs. Um, for now, I don't have any plans to bring any other thread colors in, um, but I suppose that could change in the future. Debbie says, I made your produce bag last night. Thank you, a 10 minute project. That's fantastic. So the produce bag that Debbie's talking about was part of Minikin season two. That was the bodega grocery bag. There was a grocery bag and, and a bonus uh, produce bag made of mesh um, and uh, it was a lot of fun making that particular project and it's very useful and like Debbie said um, a 10 minute project. Uh, Charmaine says will any of your current patterns work well for drumsticks? I'm looking for a drumstick carrier holder. Um, do you know? I thought like needle mind or something you know some like a sewing needle could be like a drumstick but I don't oh, think you have anything for okay. or something like that particular. Um, let me know if we're getting this totally wrong, or you can email me after the show, and I'm happy to help. Um, again, yeah, my email. Drumsticks, carrier holder. What else could it be? I don't know. Like drumming. Oh, actual drumsticks. For a drumstick carrier okay, slash okay, holder. Okay, 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 okay. Um, so one thing would work for that. Uh, in Minikin season one, there's the grab and go sleeve, which is technically a pattern uh, designed for either. Electronic devices, um, I've made one for a book to be a book cover, but the way the pattern works is you measure the item that you're making the bag for. So in the case of your drumsticks, you could just uh, place them on the table next to each other, measure the length and the height. And uh, the way that particular pattern works is you just plug your measurements into the pattern and then I direct you how large to cut your pattern pieces based on the measurements from measuring your item. So, that particular pattern could very well work for the drumsticks because... What about the Creative Maker one with like the, you know, you have the marker holders and stuff? Yeah, and but drumstick, I'm thinking drumsticks are long and so I think that would be bigger I mean, than the... Not that long, but... Well, the Creative Maker I think is about 12 inches. Can I'm... you adjust the size of it? Well, that's why I'm suggesting the grab and go because that one's uh, adjustable. adjustable without having to do any extra thinking. Um, again, that was the grab and go sleeve from Minikin Season 2. However, Danny's correct. If you'd like to do some tinkering with the pattern, the Creative Maker Supply Case would work. But um, like he mentioned, you'd have to do some, you'd have to figure out some adjustments on your own. Um, Lori says, regarding thread weight, I use a lot of Guterman thread. No weight is ever listed. How do you know what the weight is? That's a great question. I haven't used Guterman thread in a few years. I do have some in my stash, but I don't regularly use it. Um, it seems crazy they don't label it, to be honest, unless they only carry one weight. Maybe they do, and maybe it's just a subtle labeling, like uh, an Orifil. They do have the thread weight labeled on the Orifil threads, but uh, the spool colors are also different. Like, for example, 40 weight thread comes on a green spool. 50 weight thread comes on an orange spool. Um, if anyone knows the answer to the Guterman question, let us know in the comments. Like I said, I haven't used the Guterman thread in a few years, so I don't know off the top of my head. Um, can you explain about different zipper materials? What is best for bags, nylon or metal, and what do the numbers mean? That's a great question. So I did, I think we talked about um, the numbers specifically, but just the general zippers that I usually use for bag making. Number three zippers are also known as dress skirt zippers. Those are usually about seven eighths of an inch in width. Handbag zippers are known as either number 4.5 zippers or number five. Either of those can be um, handbag zippers. And the number means 
um, the spacing as far as the uh, the teeth goes in relation to the zipper tape. So um, uh, I, I guess for bag making, the three numbers that you need to know is number three zipper, which I sometimes refer to as a regular zipper. Handbag zippers will all be always be number 4.5 or number 5. And as far as the teeth go, metal zippers are a little bit more difficult to work with. You'll either need to hand crank when you get to the metal teeth or remove the metal teeth so that you don't sew over the teeth and break a needle. Nylon zippers are very easy to work with. They can be easily cut, easily sewn over. Um, there are also nylon zipper teeth that are metallic look, which are uh, the zippers by the yard that we sell. So there isn't a right or wrong, uh, but nylon is a lot, a lot more easier to work with. Um, Dawn says, I'm having trouble finding ShapeFlex interfacing. Yeah, unfortunately, um, I'm not sure if it's because of mask making, but Pollen ShapeFlex has been really difficult to get a hold of for the last couple of months. Um, uh, but as we were talking about the woven fuse earlier, um, that's available at gotinterfacing.com. I shouldn't say that's available because I don't know if they actually have it in stock, but that's another option if you're having a hard time finding pollen shape flex uh, for your bags because uh, just about, uh, as you know, just about every lining uh, that we make has pollen shape flex. So, um, you know, I guess that's a, a small problem right now, finding that particular interfacing. Casey says Guterman is on the inside. Um, thank you for that. So Casey means the Guterman, uh, the thread weight, the number is on the inside. Are you calling it on the questions? Yes, All right. Uh, I apologize if we did not get to your questions live, but a lot of interesting questions tonight. And actually, I have to say a lot of them were not questions I'd seen before. So very interesting. Um, we'll be back next Sunday. Uh, like I said, I'll be demonstrating uh, the new acrylic templates next Sunday that products that I found for repairing holes in fabric or quilts. Um, so that'll be really interesting as well. So hope to see you next Sunday. And I do have uh, one last thing to get to tonight, which is the giveaway. I'm going to be giving away um, six rolls of cork. Um, I, they'll be surprise and mystery colors. Um, so not maybe not necessarily jeans blue, but I pulled this jeans blue out because I was working with it earlier today. Um, all you have to do to enter the giveaway is answer my question in the comments wherever you watch the show, either on Facebook or YouTube. Make sure you're logged into your account first before you try to answer the question. And my question for this week is, what's your favorite sandwich? So uh, what's your favorite sandwich? Mm, right now, a turkey with salami and cheese mm. with mustard. Avocado or no avocado? No avocado. Uh, I had a grilled cheese sandwich today with some tomato soup. It was very good. Uh, favorite sandwich? I don't know. Here's a better question. You guys eat grilled cheese. Do you put one slice or two slices of cheese in there? <laughs> Sarah, you're a one slice lady. I like one slice. I and like I, two slices. I made Violet sandwich today, and she asked me, "Oh, did you put two slices?" And I said, "No, I, I so didn't think better. I didn't think about it. It's just a habit." So, um, yeah, I'm a, a one slice person, definitely. Um, yep. All right, thank you for joining us for Social Sunday. I hope you have a great week and happy sewing. Bye, Bye everybody. everybody.